Okay. Heading into the final hour. Final hour of trading here Wednesday, March 10th. 3.05 p.m. Oh, some pretty decent action today. Pretty decent action. I'm going to get into it here. A little more detail. Starting off here with the S&P. Uh, now in a nice little uh, five-day five-day jump off those lows. Uh, currently sitting 39.09, up about 33 points on the day. Uh, with most of the strength uh, coming into the energy, energy kind of leading the way. Uh, S&P oil and gas exploration up 3.5%. Equipment and services up 3.7%. Uh, so those are the star sector spiders uh, at the top of the list. Uh, home builders, home builders up about two, two point seven. Metals and mining, two point seven percent. Aerospace, banking, banking sector about two percent gains uh, across the board there. Uh, one red flag. Let's move over to Nasdaq 100. So she seems to be stalling here. Uh, she's lagging. She's lagging the bro the broader market averages, and she seems to be stalling here at the 50-day moving average. Now, I'm not gonna make any predictions or you know throw out the crystal ball, but I'm gonna basically say uh, that the tech rally may be losing a little steam. Uh, could be losing a little steam. At the bottom of the list is the semiconductors. Uh, spider semiconductors are actually down seven tenths of a percent uh, after a pretty decent day yesterday. Uh, spider technology is down five tenths of a percent. Okay, or excuse me, New York. Yeah, New York uh, spider technology. The regular sector spider tech, tech technology is uh, just below the flat line, down um, 0.08 percent. Uh, internet pretty much at the flat line uh, on the day up four cents on that ETF biotech uh, up about four tenths of a percent so tech is lagging today I mean uh, nothing's really changed with the recent trend it's ma mainly value stocks uh, if I look at the small cap uh, spider SLY it's the SLY V the value Value stocks um, leading the way today, up 2%. Mid-cap value stocks up 1.7%, whereas the growth, spider growth, uh, only up three-tenths. Mid-cap growth only up uh, a percentage point. So the same same trend, with the exception of the little comeback uh, yesterday, is uh, it's back into the value plays again. So value outperforming growth here over probably what the last uh, week and a half at this point something like that so uh, caution caution is is being played in these markets now um, we did get a little boost here in the last hour uh, after uh, the covid bill uh, got signed uh, we'll just switch on over here to futures for a second uh, so you see here uh, we had a nice rally there right on the um, the 250 mark uh, jumping about nine points on S&P futures, but so far now has given it all up. Okay. Uh, I suppose post-COVID relief now, the focus should probably kind of go to a theme I've been talking about, moving towards the infrastructure side of things. That's going to be probably next on the agenda uh, in Washington. Uh, so... I have some plays going on there. I got out of a GE uh, position actually um, a couple days ago. Uh, in today's announcement that they want to reverse split the stock uh, brought that one down um, about 70 cents uh, GE. Uh, but some other plays I, I like is like this uh, Babcock Wilcox, uh, basically a um, a boiler maker, nothing sexy, just a boiler maker, but it's a nice cheap stock, some pretty decent fundamentals going on there. I kind of like the, the turnaround play that's happening there. I'm still kind of struggling here on this infrastructure and energy alternatives, but last couple days, uh, you can see uh, she's having 
a uh, nice little push up. In fact, let's get up to the bigger chart here uh, so we get a little more stats in play. Um, but the last couple of days, uh, she, she's making a little comeback. Um, but I think the whole infrastructure play, the caterpillars, the the deers, the the machinery makers, the engineering firms, 5G, uh, health information systems. You know, I think that's going to be uh, where some money flows uh, in anticipation of some infrastructure spending. Okay. Um, now, I just mentioned pretty much spider sectors. I want to get uh, a little more granular. Uh, right now, talk about uh, some specific industries uh, making moves today. Uh, gambling stocks. Gambling stocks are, are pretty much leading uh, the industries on the upside today with about 8% gain on some of the gaming stocks. You take stocks like um, uh, International Game Tech. How about DraftKings? Let's just go to DraftKings. DraftKings up 12% on the day. Uh, she's looking like she wants to reach into new highs. On DraftKings. In fact, uh, let's kind of do a whole, a whole little run through on the profile on DraftKings. Uh, just bear with me while I, I populate my screens here for a second. I'll just let you stare at the chart because it's such a pretty chart. Nice pretty chart. Pushing up, pushing up Barmer those last three days, right off that 50-day moving average on DraftKings. Uh, so while that populates let me just say DraftKings which came listed here in early 2020 uh, late 2019 uh, right around the $11 low teens in the low teens um, currently up 70 so after about a year and a half year and a half she's up what something something close to five six hundred percent I guess something like that uh, you know I'm kind of just spitballing there on, on the percent gain but um, let me just move DraftKings up here just to get in sync uh, with the timestamps here move that over Let's make sure that that's populating right on the DraftKings. Boom. There we go. 69.81. Okay, that's about right. Uh, so DraftKings, where are we at with that? Fundamentally, about $500 million in revenue. Okay. Uh, losing $700 million in revenue. Okay, here over the last year. Um, got about 25% institutional uh, sponsorship. Insiders got about 6% of the stock. Um, you know, so the whole profitability is somewhat being foregone uh, for uh, the growth on revenue. And uh, percent change on revenue uh, over one year period was uh, about 137%. Um, just kind of stretching out here, looking out about six months here. I uh, see she really took a took a hit there uh, around the October period, October November period, but then she started climbing from there. So basically, getting from the thirty-five dollar level up to around seventy, so roughly a double since the October November period on DraftKings. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me turn off my mic. Okay, get the coughs out of the way. Uh, but gambling, gambling stocks are up about 8%, 8.5% on the day. DraftKings leading the way in that group, up 12%. Next one uh, is International Game Technology, IGT. Um, she is currently trading uh, 18.12, up almost 11% on the day. Uh now, international game technology, kind of similar situation, uh, doing three billion in sales, but losing close to a billion, uh, losing eight hundred ninety-seven million. Um, and again, it's kind of a sacrifice for growth uh, in lieu of profitability. 
Now the problem is, you know, compared to DraftKings, she's not showing the same kind of year-over-year -year gain on, on sales. But uh, looking out, uh, the street likes it over the last six months and has taken it up from that $8 level up to 18 So, you know, 120-some percent, and she seems to be leveling out in this $17 to $19 range. But anyway, uh, having a, a pretty good look today uh, at eighteen twelve up 10.8% on IGT and in fact let me just uh, get that time stamped okay time stamped at 18 11 now we can flip on over to the chart so again as I was saying I'm going to have to repeat myself because I just got to stay in sync uh, with the timestamps. Uh, so six months, six month performance, roughly 120% gain, kind of leveling out over the last three months in this 16 to 18 dollar range, 16 to 19 dollar range. Uh, but having a nice day today, coming up off the basement, coming up off those support levels to a certain degree. Uh, with a 10.7% gain on IGT. And just to repeat, sales 3.1 billion, losing 900 million. Uh, but the losses over the last three, four quarters uh, have been improving uh, on a percentage basis. For example, four quarters back, losing. Um, 700% year over year, two quarters back, 200%. Last quarter, only a 45% uh, decline over the prior year. So a little bit of an improving picture there on IGT uh, on the fundies. And that's somewhat reflecting in the stock over the last few months. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of get into the gambling uh, picture there. Uh, how about infrastructure operations? Uh, up again, I think this is this is the move. I think going out here over the next quarter, quarter or two. Uh, but anyway, two and a half percent gain here. You see it getting off its support level set back in late January uh, and late February, uh, two times bouncing off that level. Uh, infrastructure operations, the group uh, we're talking about, and within that group. Uh, you know, you've got en engineering firms, you got, you know, just basic construction, uh, big, you know, civil engineering um, type construction uh, plays. Um, um, residential construction, residential construction uh, today, that group up 3.8%, uh, ready to hit new highs here, you know. Uh, um, what else? What else? Uh, materials, so like aluminum. Aluminum today is up 5%. And the materials sector is metals and mining. Spider metals and mining is up 3% on the day, touching into new highs now. Um, new highs, basically, for the year uh, is the spider metals and mining. So all your aluminum plays, steel, uh, gold, um, again, uh, that's kind of the root of the whole infrastructure theme, right? Um, so I think you should, you know, just be aware of that. Just kind of be aware of that. Now let's get into some uh, some stocks from my screen here. So we're in the final hour of trading. We're just going to kind of spitball it here on a few different stocks. So um, on my core 95 list, what is that? That is uh, my core rankings uh, that are 95 or better. Uh, and this first one would be Marine Max, uh, symbol HZO. Uh, Marine Max, uh, especially, basically specialty retail. I'll let you take a guess what Marine, Marine Max does. Uh, 1.6 billion in revenue, 90 million in earnings. Showing triple-digit gains over the last four quarters, 122% uh, last year, last quarter up 153%, second quarter back 260%. Uh, so is it really any surprise that this stock has just been 
uh, uh, you know, a near 700% performer uh, over the last year. Um, but anyway, having a good day today. Seven tenths, pushing into new highs. Marine Max is one of my core 95 screen picks of the day. And despite all those gains on sales and earnings, as I just mentioned, um, in fact, on sales, change in revenue over the last year is up 24%. Uh, it's only trading eight and a half times earnings, uh, roughly. Um, in fact, let me just get an update on that PE. I probably shouldn't say that. Let me just update my profile here. Let's update the profile. Make sure I'm speaking correctly. Make sure I'm speaking correctly. Give that a second to populate. But we got the Dow up 530, 530 points. Big swings going on right now. Big volatility. Okay, so here's the Marine Max profile now populated. Um, so here, uh, let's zoom in on let's zoom in on the uh, the middle part here. In fact, I'm just how about if I show it this way? I haven't been showing these other views that I have. So let's, yeah, let's go to that viewpoint. I like that one. That's my ranks. So, but anyway, over on the left there, you see trailing 12 month revenue increases uh, in earnings uh, year over year on the on the left, on the left here, right? Um, trailing 12 month. Uh, uh, that's the percentage gains, by the way. Percentage gains here. The actual numbers. Um, you know, just a slow, steady trend up. You know, and then here's all my ranks. Um, Sorry, let's get rid of that. You know, here's my ranks. 99 overall rank. 99.9. .9. It doesn't get any better than that on an overall rank uh, with my rank system. Uh, fundamental rank, 97. Technical rank, 95. Power rank, 99.9. .9. Timeliness rank, 86.5. So anyway, core 95 core um, pick uh, is this uh, Marine Max coming out of my screens today. Uh, next, next we're going to look at three in my core 90 list with a timeliness rank north of 90. I'm going to start off with Calyx. Let's go with Calyx. Calyx, C-A-L-X. Uh, what's the story here? Software application, tech sector, uh, kind of ignoring the sell-off. Uh, in tech over the last couple weeks, a few weeks, hitting new highs uh, today, um, up four tenths of a percent. Just been a stellar performer here over the last six months, uh, gaining better than better than 100 percent, 120, 130. You know, you just take your pick on where from the starting point. But um, a company here doing 500 million, 540 million sales, earnings of about 33 million. Uh, last year gain on EPS was 259%. Last quarter was like a 3,700% gain. Second quarter back, 633% gain. Trading about 52 times earnings, but that's understandable. Revenue growth year over year is 27% uh, here on Calyx. Okay, so anyway, um, this stock uh, has some pretty strong ranks. Uh, uh, so should I populate that and show it? No. Why don't you just take my word for it? High rank stock in the 90s on the core ranks uh, with Calyx. Okay. Uh, next on the list, uh, UP Fintech Holding, symbol TIGR. TIGR. Uh, capital Markets, Fintech Play sold off there with the tech sell-off over the last uh, couple of weeks at the end of February. Uh, showing a little support here around this uh, 1680 level, roughly bouncing from there. Um, I have no financials on that. Let me see if my profile does it. I probably should talk about some fundies here. Let's give that a second. 
Let's flip on over to here for a second while that populates. Yeah, I got some other screens. I'm going to start showing on these profiles. And I'm just kind of smoothing it out uh, to get these updates uh, a little quicker, quicker on the draw as I'm as I'm talking about them. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, I got financials, uh, just not on my charting program. Uh, so the financials there, in fact, let me go over to this profile look. Let's go to that profile look. I like that one better. So last quarter report uh, was about $111 million in revenue with $7 million in earnings. Uh, in the second and third quarter of 2020, they just broke into profitability. And that's what you can kind of see here over on the right up here. Okay, just breaking into profitability. So, uh, and then revenues just kicking butt on the on the trailing 12 month. Uh, and you know, so as a result, you know, I got some strong ranks uh, going on with this one. Uh, in fact, let me switch on over to this one. Oh, this one. Yeah, let's go to the, my ranks. Just ignore this stuff down here. I gotta fix that. But here's my ranks: 99.8 overall fundamental rank, 93.6 power rank, 93.6 time on this rank, 95.6. My ranks are gold, baby. I mean, it, you know, you don't even have to know much about the company. My ranks just kind of filter out all the noise, do all the formulations, and if I even don't know a whole lot about the fundamental story, my ranks will tell me the fundamental story. Uh, without looking at these charts, you know, that's why my ranks are gold and I really got to start putting these uh, ranks out in a big way. Uh, but anyway, UP Fintech Holding uh, next on the list uh, on the screens. Symbol TIGR like a tiger. It's got the eye of the tiger on this one. And, you know, probably pretty good levels there. Um as I said, you know, beware a little bit on tech. Uh, she could come retest these lows, um, as I was showing you earlier on. That sure looks like um, we're stalling a little bit at the 50-day moving average on tech uh, for Nasdaq and stuff. But um, but otherwise, on this stock here, you know, increasing volume over the last three months. I mean, in a, in a major way, and just taking this stock up uh, almost tenfold uh, to its highs. You know, I mean, that's that's something that, you know, you're not seeing talked about in the Reddit crowd. Uh, these kind of moves, these kind of stocks are next on the list. How about resonant resonant? This is coming from the core 90 screen resonant. R.E.S.N. Uh, semiconductor maker selling off with tech down 4% on the day. Uh, but my screens like it because fundamentally, uh, you know, it's a very small, this is kind of like a small cap play. Only 42 million shares out in the float. They're only doing about 3 million in sales, losing about 30 million. But the earnings per share have been, have been improving over the last four quarters straight and almost sequentially. So there's kind of a, um, um, uh, a quick move towards profitability uh, kind of happening here in fact uh, this is probably worth pulling up on my profile so let me uh, uh, populate that but we'll just kind of get into the nitty-gritty here as you see at the beginning of the year she was you know south of two uh, in the basement got up to around the seven dollar level so almost a 300 percent move to the upside obviously there was some profit taking little sell off with tech gotten almost to the 200 day moving average and bouncing from there but like i had said on nazi kind of stalling here at the 50 um so you know little caution on that but still if i mean if you know if that's fine if you're a day trader swing trader you know but if you're looking at an, at an investment okay um there's some good things happening here so now as i look at my ranks let's go ahead and uh, move back to the profile uh, look here 
let's go to top right here. Yeah, let's let's go over here. So as you see, improvement on the revenue here uh, from those uh, last few quarters. Improvement on the earnings, even though they're still seeing a loss. Uh, you know, granted, we got three analysts covering this um, high price target of 840. Okay, 840. Uh, but along my ranks here, you know, 99 overall rank, fundamental rank 90, timeliness rank 98, power rank 94. You know, my timeliness rank is gold too. Uh, I'll be talking a lot more about my ranks um, as I get more of these clips out. I just just started getting these clips out. I haven't been on the mic, on the camera talking about this stuff in 10 years, and I just decided it's time to get back. You're back in the groove. So whatever, if you're watching right now, you're watching the comeback. The comeback kid with his his trade takes. Anyway, and I built all this stuff. All this stuff to make it easy to talk to you guys about it. Not like all these other stock jocks that just throw up a chart. They got their technicals, you know. They're, they're the technical warriors, you know. Do this, do that. This is what we're doing. You know, never a fundamental story out of these guys. Never. Never. So, a whole new flavor. A whole new flavor. So, um, that is from those screens. Now, I'm going to delete about 30 stocks here. We're going to talk about some streakers, some streakers, some of the streaks. What is streaking? Okay. So next, we're going to go to LGI Homes. LGI Homes, LGIH. This is obviously a home builder, residential construction. And when I say streaks, okay, it's because, I'll just, uh, let me see, can I show it over here? I'll just explain on the streaks real quick, just so you know what I'm talking about. These are stocks streaking up, current days of the streak, percentage move within the streak, and we're talking about LGI homes uh, right now. Okay, so getting back on over to here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine day streak, nine day streak, moving something like 30% up 3% today on the day. Now volume's drying up a little bit. Okay. So she had a nice run, but I guess the, the, the key, why am I showing it is because this is where money's been flowing. Okay. Over the last couple of weeks is in the home builders. Again, getting back to that whole infrastructure play, you know, if you're going to build a home, would you call that infrastructure? I'd call it infrastructure. Why not? You know, what happened all through the pandemic? People, you know, sitting at home. They invested in their homes. So why do you think all these, you know, uh, home builders or or um, uh, home furnishings, home depots, you know, the the just the whole play of just, you know, putting your dollar into your castle? You know, that's what that's. It's one of the best investments in the world, and in this case, it has paid off as a stock investment. Uh, going back over the last year, from the pandemic low of 35, the stock has nearly, it's up fourfold. Okay, yeah, she leveled out here over the last six, seven months. You know, pretty defined trading range going on there, but now she's breaking out. She's breaking out. It's the infrastructure play, I'm telling you. Okay, so uh, that was next. That one was next on the list. Uh, let's see. I talked about these already this morning, so we'll skip over those. What else? I'm not going to talk about GameStop. I'm sick of talking about that one. There's nothing to really talk about there. Um, I suppose on GameStop is how many times was it halted today? That's, that's what we should talk about. How many times was it halted? So... You know what? Not a lot there, but I am going to, we'll do a couple from the power rank screen. So let's kind of get three or four of those in there. Uh, so we're going to go next to BZH. Oh, guess what? Another home builder. Beezer Homes. BZH. So this is coming from my power rank screen. Uh, with a power rank of... Oh, I just missed it. 
I think it was in the 90s. But anyway, uh, last four days, uh, jumping, what, 20%? Something like that. 17 to 21, $4. You know, 25%, something like that. Anyway, hitting new highs. Up 5.5% today. Strong fundamentals. Strong like bull. They got sales, 2.1 billion, earnings, 61 million. Last year, 174% increase year over year on the sales. Last quarter, 344% gain on earnings. The stock's trading seven times earnings, roughly. It's strong like bull. Beezer Homes. Oh, that's from my power rank screen. Uh, next on the power rank screen, how about a financial? Sure, that makes sense. Customers Bank Corp. Symbol C-U-B-I. Okay, so financials, interest rate friendly, interest rates ticking up. Banks love it. Banks love those higher interest rates. And it's reflected in the stock for three months, watching it double Double from the mid-teens up to 3160. Hitting new highs today as we speak, up 4%. Okay, Customers Bank Corp, a regional bank. Regional bank, only 28 million shares in the float. 74% held by institutions. Triple-digit gains last quarter, 122%. Second quarter, 100%. Third quarter back. 238 percent 400 million in revenue 132 million in earnings even the sales the revenue gain year over year was 32 percent so financials financials are making a comeback they like that interest rate story so while everyone else is crying over in tech land because interest rates are bringing the market down they're taking the financials up period point blank Drop the mic. Financials. Uh, how about one more? We'll do two more. We'll do two more from the power rank screen. Let's go to Balchem. Balchem. I don't even know who they are, what they do. Um, I do know a Stevens analyst uh, raised it from equal weight to overweight um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, but Balchem, BC, BC, PC is the symbol on the Belgium specialty chemical basic materials uh, also streaking one two three four five six jumping what 10 15 percent over the last week and a half whatever up three percent today uh, doing about 700 million in revenue 80 million on the earnings uh, single digit gains uh, for each quarter over the last four quarters uh, almost sequential almost sequential growth they went from 3% second quarter back to 7% last quarter. Uh, earnings gains year over year. Uh, sales, revenue gain over the year up 9%. So basic materials, specialty chemical maker, Balchum, test and highs. Test and highs as you look back over a couple of months here. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's hitting my power screen, and I believe the power rank on that is the, what is my power rank? Oh boy, why didn't I already have that up? We're gonna talk about it anyway. We're gonna populate it anyway. I'm gonna stay with it, and I'm gonna do one more, and I guess I'll wrap it up with about 20 minutes to go to the end of trading. But these are a little piece. These are little tidbits. Little tidbits of how I'm going to show a lot of this stuff. You know, here. We'll flip on over to here. You know, and I'll be just zooming in. Zooming in on different parts of the stuff. I'll just put that right over the charts and stuff like that. Do my thing like that. Um. <laughs> Got a badass guitar solo going there. Uh, so anyway, there's my ranks. Yeah, power rank, 99.3. Okay. So that's why that got onto that screen. And then one more, one more, and I'm going to tell you the power rank first, so I don't have to go. How about a 99.9? .9? Let's finish with a 
8.9 on my power ranks. This is Darling Ingredients. Symbol D-A-R. Uh, and what do you know? Stock that's hitting new highs. Darling Ingredients. Look at that move over the last year. Oh, oh, oh my God. It's just a 45 degree angle up from the 20s to 7 to 80. Got to 80, so a nice 400% gainer there for a packaged food company, consumer defensive. So that's a value play, okay? That ex that explains that. Um, value stocks, are, as I said, outperforming the growth stocks here recently in the last couple weeks. Um, 3.6 billion in revenue, 300 million on the earnings. Uh, slight dec decline last quarter, uh, three quarters before that. Second quarter back was a 300% gain on earnings year over year, earnings per share. Third quarter back, 140% gain. Fourth quarter back, 363%. And even the sales revenue on a $3 billion company, 6% increase on sales. Um, $156 million in the float, trading about 30 times earnings. Uh, but, you know, it's a defensive play. They sell food. You got to eat, right? You got to eat. A better investment is a company that sells food, right? <laughs> the no-brainer on that one. Um, so anyway, Darling Ingredients, just off the highs. Nice, nice uh, power rank uh, screen pick, overall rank. Um, oh, wait a minute. Did I do that right? Am I being stupid here? Let me just... Uh, let me make sure I'm giving you the right rank number. I have the wrong stock up on the profile. See, I, I still am working out the kinks. Still working out the kinks. Got to get my mojo. Got to be accurate here before people take my head off. And say, oh, you're showing the other stock. You're not showing the right stock. You dummy. Get it right. Anyway, darling ingredients. Yeah. Now that's the power rank, 99.9, .9, not 99.3. So that's even better. Um, eight analysts cover this. Eight analysts cover this, and the high price target is 95 out of those eight analysts. Um, <laughs> why does this thing... Why do I have it classified as a waste management company rendering and meat byproduct processing? And yet it comes up on this other classification as packaged foods. Uh, really? Um, okay, so we got a little classification issue going on there. Let's, let's get clear on that one. Let me pull up the profile on that one. Let's go to Yahoo profile. Let's see what Yahoo says. Yeah, packaged foods, consumer defensive. Let's get the description. They develop, produce, and sell natural ingredients from edible and inedible bionutrients. It offers an ingredients and customized specialty solutions for customers in pharmaceutical food, pet food, feed, industrial fuel, bioenergy, and fertilizer industries. See, this is interesting. What an interesting play. They're all over the place. Company collects, transforms various animal byproduct streams into usable and specialty ingredients, collagen, edible fats, feed grade fats, animal proteins, meals, plasma, pet food ingredients, organic fertilizers, yellow grease, fuel feedstock, green energy. It also recovers and converts used cooking oil and animal fat. So I guess it is a waste management company also. Uh, anyway, on the power rank screen, and in, and the power rank is 99.9, .9, as I said, about as high as it gets. I like this stock. I might add this to my watch list. See, I discover, I, I come in, because of the way I'm doing this whole thing, I've been discovering some great company. You know, after 30 years of doing this, it used to be, you know, you'd always be moved towards what was popular, what was being talked about, what was being written about. 
you know, and the media sometimes can kind of control the flow over what you're really paying attention to when you're trying to discover companies. So I buckled down for a few years, decided to build up my own little ranking system, my own little screens, my own, how should I say, proprietary method of discovering these things. And then just by virtue of doing this broadcast, I come across companies like this and I, you know, I learned that, damn, this is a really interesting company. They're into some good stuff. Uh, and it's no wonder that it's a 400% gainer over the last year. I mean, come on now. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just sick. And that's what you're going to get following my broadcasts. I'm not going to be like these other guys. I'm not going to be the clown. I'm not going to get on there with my little picture sitting over a chart. You know, I'm going to give you the fundamental story. I'm going to give you the news wires. I'm going to give you the events. I'm going to be talking about the futures, the forex, the commodities. I'm going across many different asset classes. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on crypto. You know, that's, you know, to each his own on that. I mean, I, I, I like the story of some things about crypto, but you know, I just can't get crazy over it. They say it's the future. I don't know how much of the future it really is. Blockchain's probably the future for supply chains, financial services, healthcare to a certain degree. Uh, not Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin it's just a, it's just a just something that someone says this is how much it's worth. So that's its value and it's a store of value. But you know it's blockchain. Blockchain is the story on all that. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to get into a whole crypto uh, um, uh, philosophy right now. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to wrap it up with that. Uh, Darling Ingredients. I like the stock. I'm going to look at it. How about um, something that I am into? Uh, should I do that? Well, I'm not going to throw it on the list to timestamp it, but I do have some options going on on this biotech stump, uh, company, Omeros. And as you can see here, she's kind of coming off a level. Uh, actually, let me switch. Let me switch this off here. Okay. Uh, I got some options going on that. Uh, I got some options going on Babcock Wilcox, uh, Boilermaker. Um, I'm holding this infrastructure, infrastructure and energy alternatives, uh, uh, company building wind farms, solar farms, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I got Blackberry. Uh, I can spend all day talking about Blackberry, but I'm not gonna, uh, GE I've been going in and out of, of course that news on the reverse split today. Uh, it's no surprise. It kind of came down. I'm kind of lucky. I got out of the options here three days ago. Um, but I'll be looking at GE again, probably. She's getting back to a trading level. Uh, so those are positions I'm holding uh, right now. Not a lot. Not a lot. I'm very cautious right now. Um, you know, the market's showing cracks, and I think there's a lot of good value uh, to look for. Uh, like that story I just told you on Darling Ingredients. I mean, that's that's a great story. Um, in fact, uh, just one more thing I want to mention on Darling Ingredients. I just want to double-check something. Yeah, she's only 30 times earnings, two and a half times sales. I really like this story here. I'm going to I'm gonna look more into Darling Ingredients. She might be going on my watch list. Um, but that's it. I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, got about 12 minutes to the close. I'll be back on later tonight, uh, do a little post-market wrap-up. This one might come late tonight. Might not be till 9 or 10 o'clock tonight, but... Uh, I just want to get this out there, get a few pics in there, get the YouTube video up uh, for these guys at Echo Fin, and, um, you know, I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.